Um, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is A Weapons, Midlife Music. Shouts out to the almighty LDBC. Go to ldbcsports.com where you can register, make a profile, interact with the brothers and sisters of the LDBC. Also go to trilltalk.net where you can hear sports talk, social commentary. You can pick up some LDBC merch there. Um, lastly, go to my first home, which is A Weaponry on Shopify.com. There you can pick up BFTB merch, Drew Titan merch, my merch, um, my boy Reflection Beatdown. He's like a producer. Um, you can pick up. Let me see who else I got. Well, I, I got a few people. You can also pick up Pitbull, the bodyguard, who's um, Whack 100's on Bodyguard. You can pick up his stuff there as well. Um, I'm going to try to make this video short. I'm going to try. Um, I just saw that Lee Lockning, who's the trumpet player and sometimes background singer and guitar player for um, the legendary rock band Chicago, had mentioned that their new lead singer, well, he's not new, new, like he's been around for a couple of years. But um, the lead singer, the new lead singer that they have, um, Neil Donald, that's his name. I always thought it was Neil O'Donnell, but it's Neil Donald. That he's a better singer than Peter Cetera. And Peter Cetera was the first... Well, he... Okay, the way Chicago was, it was a six-man band. You know, it had the horn section, which is Walt Parazeta, saxophone, clarinet, and um, flute. Then you had um, Jimmy Panko, who's a trombone player, but he also plays keyboards, too. And then you have Lee Lockname, who's a trumpet player, but he also services as a guitar player, and he plays some keyboard stuff as well. Now, um, <clears throat> the way the group started out, Terry Calf was, as a matter of fact, this may be a long video. Terry Calf was supposed to be the lead singer because what they tried to do, they tried to give like a total rock experience with horns and with the Jimi Hendrix experience. So Terry Calf had that type of sound. So they wanted him to be the lead singer. And then Robert Lamb, which is their keyboard player, he also plays um, guitar also. So they wanted Robert Lamb and Peter Cetera, who's the bass player and the high tenor, to back um, Terry Calf. So once Terry Calf had accident accidentally killed himself, Peter Cetera became more prominent as the lead singer of Chicago. And then in the early 80s, Peter Cetera became a megastar when they brought in David Foster to help with the production. Matter of fact, most of the production, David Foster played the keys anyway. So, Peter Cetera was the reason that people like me fell in love with Chicago. I did not fall in love with Chicago in the 70s. I fell in love with Chicago when Peter Cetera was doing his thing in the 80s. Great singer. And he had a pretty good solo career as well. So once Peter Cetera left, they went and got Jason Sheff. Jason Sheff was supposed to be Peter Cetera's replacement, you know, like the high tenor voice. And Jason did a pretty good job, you know what I'm saying, as long as they did the David Foster-like songs. But once they left that element, and they started focusing on, you know, um, organic musicianship, like non-synthesizer musicianship, you can hear the flaws in Jason's voice. Jason is pitchy. Not that he's not a good singer, but he's pitchy sometimes. And so um, <clears throat> once he left, they went and got this guy named Jeff Coffey. And Jeff Coffey can basically do Peter Cetera's parts with no problem. But I think that Jeff Coffey had an issue with the touring situation because Chicago tours constantly. So he left and then they brought Neil Donald. Now, the reason that they found Neil Donald is because Neil Donald used to front a Chicago like cover band called Beginnings. And they were pretty good, too. And he is a great singer. I'm not going to ever say that he's not. He's a great singer. But he's not Peter Cetera. Let's just be honest. He's not. And so I think that Lee Lockney, he, he was saying that Neil Donald is a better singer than Peter Cetera. I, I, I disagree. 
They're both great singers, but Peter Cetera has a natural high tenor. His high tenor is 100% natural. Neil Donald is not a natural high tenor. He's a natural tenor, but not a natural high tenor. Like, for example, right? Brian McKnight is a natural high tenor singer. He's na that, that, that's his range. That's his everything. Jojo from Jodeci is not a high tenor. Jojo from Jodeci is a tenor. He's just a pure tenor. But he's not a high tenor. There's a difference. So, but even, okay, we're, we're going to not talk about textures and voice ranges. We're just going to talk about singing aptitude. Yes, Neil Donald is a whole lot more soulful than Peter Cetera. You know, like, you know, the, 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 the inflections of his voice and everything. You could tell that Neil Donald has listened to a lot of black singers. He has a lot of soul in him. Peter Cetera doesn't have a lot of soul in him, but he is a, to me, he's a better singer. And what Chicago tried to do, well, what they're trying to do also, is they're trying to get Neil Donald to do what Peter Cetera does. If you listen to the song, um, what's the song that they just did? Now, I'm going to tell you something. The song is dope. Okay, let me just put it that way. Let me just see if I can find the name of the song. Oh, someone needed me the most. You know for a fact that that is basically when you love somebody till the end of time. It's that type of vibe. When you love somebody, always on my mind. And then they even got like another guy singing in the background doing Bill Champlin's part on the song. So I'm like, now don't get me wrong. That's a hit. Someone needed me the most. That is a hit record. But you can tell that they basically picked up a Peter Cetera blueprint and said, follow this. Good song, though. And um, I think that Lee Lockdown is bugging out. I, I really think he's bugging out. I think it's salt. And I think that those dudes have a problem with Peter Cetera. I think they have a problem with him. Because once he left, and let's just be honest, once Peter Cetera left Chicago, that was the end of those big hits. Like they had a couple of songs, Look Away, um, You're Not Alone, What Kind of Man Will I Be, um, If She Would Have Been Faithful. Good songs now. I'm not saying they're not good, but they weren't smashes like what Peter Cetera did. Because think about it. When Peter Cetera went on his own and he did Gloria Love, the Karate Kid joint, that's a hit. That's a bona fide hit. His voice was all, okay, his voice was second as far as the most sought out background vocal or whatever. His voice was, he was second. Who was first? Michael McDonald. <laughs> Another white boy. But Michael McDonald, you can't really say that he's a white boy. You, you can't really say that. He Michael McDonald's black. He's just in white skin, and you know, let's just call it what it is. But Peter Cetera's voice was the most sought after voice for background vocals, because when he did those high parts in a in a three part harmony, and sometimes even a four part harmony, you knew it was him, and it had that you know it it had that resonance in it. So I think Lee Lightning is throwing some salt. I think he's throwing some salt there. Neil Donald is a great singer. Not a very good singer. He's a great singer. I will give it to him. He is. But he's no Peter Cetera. You know, let's just be honest. Peter Cetera is that motherfucker. He's that dude. And all respect due to him. All respect due to what Chicago's trying to get done right now. But Lee, stop throwing salt. Stop being a hater. Peter Cetera is Chicago like it or not um that's all i got y'all once again shouts out to the almighty ldbc that's ldbcsports.com tickettvmedia.com trilltalk.net and aweaponry on shopify.com my name is a weapons peace